What's up guys? My name is Jake. Welcome to Abandoned, episode 26. This is the show where we talk about some of the most interesting abandoned places in the world. Way back in the early 90s, the Disney company was planning to build a second theme park in California adjacent to Disneyland. The space is now used for Disney's California Adventure, but before the concept of that park ever came along, Disney was planning something much more ambitious and expensive, and that was Westcott Center. In the late 70s and early 80s, the Disney company was in pretty big trouble. Their finances weren't doing well and it didn't help that they were pouring a huge amount of their money into a massive theme park they were building out in Florida named Epcot Center. Disney was in such a bad spot that they were being threatened with divisions of the company being sold off. Just as 1984 came in, two years after the slow opening of Epcot, Disney shareholders brought in Michael Eisner and Frank Wells as new active CEOs. So as the late 80s came in, the Florida parks were showing great numbers with their aggressive expansions, and Michael Eisner began dreaming of something bigger for the original Disneyland Park in California. With the consensus of keeping guests on Disney property, which would in return result in continuous profits, much like the Florida parks. So the idea was to make this theme park enticing enough to be a multi-day experience for guests. And to do this, they would need to add a lot more than what was actually already there. And really, it wasn't much, only the main park and the Disneyland Hotel, which wasn't even owned by Disney. This happened way back in the mid-50s, while Walt Disney was building Disneyland, he just couldn't sink more money into a hotel, which he desperately wanted. So what he did was, he franchised the Disney name and land out to a third-party holder. And the franchise Disney name and the land would be theirs for 90 years. Anyways, Michael Eisner didn't really like the fact that the Disneyland Hotel wouldn't legally be theirs until 2054. Eisner's plan to develop a large portion of Disneyland's surroundings included the Disneyland Hotel. So it wasn't until the late 80s when Disney actually bought the hotel and its land back while the company owning it was struggling financially. It was a little bit of a cheeky move from the Disney company. Now, Eisner began dreaming of what could become the Disneyland Resort. While all of this was happening in California, over in Europe, Euro Disneyland, now named Disneyland Paris, was well under construction with the projected opening of 1992. The park was hoping to receive a similar, if not better, success than Disney's other international park, Tokyo Disneyland. And with Eisner pretty confident that Euro Disneyland would be a financial success for the company, ideas and concepts continued with the Disneyland Resort expansion. Disney Imagineers came up with something truly incredible. In scale and ambition, this idea encompassed quite a lot and would truly define Disneyland as a multi-day resort. And this whole project would take up more than 500 acres. So what did they come up with? Well, the Westcott Master Plan. Alright, let me break it down for you. So just off to the southeast of the entrance hub would sit a 5,000 seat amphitheater called the Disney Bowl. Along with this, the expansion would include more hotels, around four of them, including a brand new Disneyland Hotel. Well, I mean, the original Disneyland Hotel would remain the same, and the new one would be called the Disneyland Resort Hotel. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confused too. Anyways, in addition, the new complex would feature a shopping and entertainment district, which is just essentially downtown Disney. And to tie this all together would be the brand new park. Westcott Center. Now this park would be built adjacent to Disneyland, and like its name, the park would carry a heavy influence from Epcot Center in Walt Disney World. And a lot of the ideas from that park would carry over to this one. At its earliest, it was rumored that some of the Future World attractions from Epcot Center would be built in Westcott, and some of these would have included the land, uh, Journey into Imagination, and Horizons. However, in its most common planning phase, there was more of a based concept of what the attractions would actually feature. The park was something pretty unique, and rather different from its counterpart in Florida. Just as you enter the park, over the main bridge and sitting atop a lush tropical island would sit Space Station Earth the largest Disney park icon ever built, standing around 300 feet tall. As a comparison, Epcot's Spaceship Earth is only around 150 feet tall, so this would have been absolutely massive. Now to be fair, this structure would have gotten a lot of its height and size from its exterior metal frame, which would have wrapped around its golden inner structure. 
All in all, Space Station Earth looked absolutely beautiful, and just like Epcot in Florida, it would have featured an Omnimover ride showcasing human innovation and technology, which led us to this point in history. The center island with Space Station Earth resting on it was called Ventureport, which would lead guests to all the different pavilions in the park. And yeah, just like Epcot and Disney World, Westcott would also have pavilions, seven to be exact, and three of them being future-based. These three would be themed off of space, life, and Earth. And similarly themed attractions over in Florida's Epcot would be built into these spaces. And say for example, living with the land would have been built into the Earth Pavilion. Attractions from Wonders of Life in Epcot would be built, as well as a unique version of Journey into Imagination. Imagineers were quoted saying that these spaces would allow a lot of creative freedom, and it would have been entirely possible to see some really creative and interesting attractions from these pavilions. Heading south down Westcott's Lake would have been four World Showcase pavilions. These would have made up Asia, Africa, Europe, and the Americas. These pavilions would have been similar to Epcot's, yet they would bring in some more hands-on interactive experiences to guests. And unlike Epcot which focuses on specific countries, Westcott's World Showcase would focus more on regions of the world. In addition, most of the locations picked were actually pretty different, and were selected to be places that you probably wouldn't visit in real life. Like walking through thick lush rainforests and vast hot deserts. They would also feature other very unique attractions like a dragon roller coaster in the Asian themed area and a recreation of the Americas before urbanization. With the elimination of the original flat Disneyland parking lot, three new multi level parking lots would be built. One very large one just off to the top west of the Disneyland property, and two others off to the east along the Santa Ana Freeway. Now Disney had some very awkward parcels of land to play with, and these garages would have been placed about a thousand feet from the parks on their own separate land. So what they came up with to solve this problem was the use of people movers. Two different lines would traffic guests to and from the parking garages, with both stations conveniently on either side of the hub connecting both parks. In addition, the existing Disneyland monorail line would be extended, almost doubled its length, to run through the new hotels and into and circle Space Station Earth inside of Westcott. And just south of those two additional parking garages would sit a rather large parcel of land, which would be used as an expansion pad. Almost large enough to fit another park. All in all, this project was absolutely massive, and on May 8th, 1991, the Walt Disney Company officially unveiled the master plan of Westcott and their projections of bringing in 25 million guests by 1998. With all of its new ideas, big structures, and rich environments, Westcott seemed like the perfect second park to the Disneyland Resort. So what happened? Why was such a great concept abandoned? Well, a lot of factors came into play, one of the largest being financing this massive concept. The project was estimated to cost Disney around $3 billion. This would have been a massive investment, especially with the development and planning of Euro Disneyland and Disney's America eating up so much of their money and time. The city of Anaheim loved the idea though. The small businesses surrounding the project, however, did not. Mostly because they would have been on the land Disney had planned to develop, and without even being contacted, the city had acquired their land for Disney, which would have left all of these businesses evicted. Disney also needed Anaheim to make a rather significant investment into the city for Disney's plan to even be possible. This would have not only been used for the relocation of the evicted businesses, but a huge upgrade to the city's infrastructure surrounding Disney. This would have been needed for the huge amount of visitors Disney was expecting, and the existing roads just could not support such high volumes. And this investment from the city would have had to have been around $800 million. By early 1992, Westcott was already being downsized in both its scale and attractions. This was most likely a result of Euro Disneyland opening with a very slow start, and the need to spend less on the new park in California. Attempting something like Westcott in Southern California is admittedly a daunting and expensive task, so it is understandable that some things needed to be cut to keep costs down. And as Euro Disneyland continued to severely underperform, the head Imagineer of the Westcott expansion stepped down which further crippled the project. By late 1993, the project was a year behind schedule, and Disney was not able to get anywhere near the funding they wanted or needed for this project. And as a result, the company began fearing the validity of this expansion plan. 
Also, public opposition began to make a noticeable dent into Disney's park, as citizens of Anaheim claimed that Westcott centerpiece, Space Station Earth, was just too much of an eyesore, and that it would look terrible as a part of the city's skyline. So some major changes were made to Westcott, which included the complete removal of the spherical Space Station Earth. In its place would be a large spire-type thing tucked to the back of the park, and admittedly, it kinda does look pretty cool still. Another major cut was the number of hotel rooms, from the planned 5,000 to just 1,800 now. This was in fear that the resort would just overexpand much like Euro Disneyland did. And with Disney unable to feel confident over their finances toward the project, all of the public backlash towards the facade of this park and the city not able to provide the money they needed for the land. By January of 1995, the Westcott Master Plan was abandoned. Even with this project killed off, it didn't stop Michael Eisner wanting a second park in Anaheim. Just a lot cheaper. Disney did consider purchasing the nearby Knott's Berry Farms Park and turning that into their Disney's America, and that would have acted as Disneyland's second park. However, that didn't really work out. If you want to know more about that and Disney's America, we have an entire episode on it. Anyways, in pursuit of finding a viable theme park concept, Eisner grouped up 30 of his top people at the company and hosted a creative summit in summer of 1995. During this time, they came up with the absolutely brilliant idea to build a theme park about California. In California? Yeah, that uh, it doesn't make sense to me either. I mean, the idea was that when tourists leave Disneyland, they go to other famous Californian landmarks. So why not just build a theme park that would incorporate all of them into one place? Yet, why visit a theme park which has substantially scaled down versions of landmarks when you could just travel a few hours to go see the real thing? I mean, what would you rather get a picture of? There was one great thing about this, and that was the cost, which was estimated at around $600 million which was pretty good from Westcott's estimated $3 billion. So, Michael Eisner approved this idea, and construction began in 1998 on the former site of Disneyland's parking lot, and where Westcott would have been. The new park was called Disney's California Adventure, and after a bunch of bad soft openings, the park officially opened on February 8th, 2001. Along with the new park, the expansion also came with a brand new hotel, a downtown Disney section, and a massive parking garage. When the park opened, uh, it didn't receive the best response from guests. I don't think this was a great place to bring the children. It still beats Disney's California Adventure. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It felt cheap, and not something Disney was known for in their theme parks. I mean, there was an entire land dedicated to farming. Yay! But don't worry guys, you could always go see Gold Golden Dreams starring Whoopi Goldberg. Look, the point is, California Adventure wasn't all that great, and following its opening, the numbers were showing. Mom, I'm gonna hide you where there's no one around for miles. Disney's California Adventure! Visitation didn't come close to meeting Disney's expectations, and the park was considered to be a failure in the company's eyes. However, once Eisner was replaced by Disney's new CEO, Bob Eidger, he did the respectable act of acknowledging the park's failure and decided to spend the money to fix it. So in 2007, Disney announced they would be putting in over $1.1 billion to revamp the park, just six years after its opening. <laughs> And to be fair now, the park looks pretty great. With the new Bonavista Street, Cars Land, and the World of Color, the park is drastically different than what it started out as, and now it's considered to be one of Disney's best parks operating. As for the parcels of land that were planned to be incorporated into the Westcott expansion, the two additional parking garages planned were never built. As a recent turn of events though, Disney has recently announced they would actually be building one of the parking garages, along with a new transportation hub on the site of one of the previous parking garages. As for that future expansion land, well the majority of the land is now being used as flat, ground level parking for both guests and cast members. So what is going to happen to the Westcott idea? Well unlike say Disney's America, which is an idea that can theoretically be built anywhere in the United States, I think Westcott was dreamed up specifically for Disneyland, and that location alone, and I don't think it was meant for anywhere else. 
The area surrounding Disneyland in Southern California is absolute chaos, and if Disney ever wanted to theoretically buy up enough land to build something like Westcott in close proximity to Disneyland, they would have to spend tens, even hundreds of millions of dollars just for all the land and the complications that come with it. I think Disney is just in a corner of what they can do in California now, and I think Westcott is just a victim of that. It is extremely unfortunate that we never got to see this happen, but we still do have Epcot, which in many cases is a bigger and better Westcott. However, it will live on to be one of the most promising and ambitious theme park projects ever created, only to be left abandoned. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, and thank you very much for watching. The, the way I wrote the script, it's like West is lowercase and then Cot is, is uppercase. So it's like West Cot. That's how I keep, whenever I read it, that's how I think of it in my head. And it's been, it's been very difficult to not to say, not to read it out as West Cot.